Hey guys, it's Mark Ridland here. Um, I got my engine. It just came in. I've been waiting all day long for this thing to come in. Finally came in. And so I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do a full unboxing. I know like I've seen countless full unboxing videos of this exact same engine and they're all the same. Go look up an unboxing video. There are tons of them available. So do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get started on this tonight. It's too late to go to my dad's house tonight. Um, but um, he has more tools than I do. But I do have some tools here so I can get started on it tonight. Maybe get the engine mounted to the frame. You know, a couple little steps here and there. And then um, and then I will show you little bits along the way. Show you snags I'm running into and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do it just one piece at a time and uh, show you what I got each time. All right, here's the engine. I have the uh, head pulled off. Um, that's like, I don't really know like what to look for necessarily. Uh, but uh, I'm seeing some like scratches in here. I assume that's probably kind of okay, maybe not. Um, at any rate, I was looking for a for the arrow because I've seen some videos where they point out a, an arrow that has to be pointed toward the exhaust, otherwise the piston's installed incorrectly. Um, I'm not seeing any arrows, so I'm just going to assume that this thing is installed correctly. And if it blows up, well, it was only hundred dollars, so I can get a new one. Um, so I guess I'll put the head back on and. Um, I don't have the torsion wrench to tighten it down anyway, so um, that's something I'll do before we fire it up. Okay, uh, first snag here. See these? These here. Those were originally, I think, for a water bottle holder. They're coming off. Um, they, the bottom one interferes, so I'm going to get my Allen wrench out or whatever and take it off. Okay, here's the next pain point. Um, the uh, throttle cable didn't seem to be long enough, but there was an extra washer right here. I'm not sure why it was there. Um, it was preventing this from going... It, it, I just literally, it was too short to get the spring on and the thing on. So I think this is good because, um, let me see here. I'm not sure if I can demo this or not. Um, I don't have enough hands to demo it. Maybe I can just set that there. Yeah, there we go. And then... Looks like it's working to me. I mean, that goes, like, all the way in, I think. So, I mean, looks like it's working properly to me. I don't think I really need full open much and it is adjusted this is all the way like I've, I've adjusted this all the way open so I mean I don't know I, there's like I can tighten this down quite a bit now so I just don't think that that extra washer is uh this one here just one like regular old washer like that um, and that was on there in between those two pieces so I don't know why. I don't understand it, uh, but it, this, this fits. It looks like it did in the in the videos. So uh, I got the gas tank on. I got this uh, set up here. The uh, engine put on. I ended up using the wide bracket um, because the stock one wasn't long enough to fit. It, I mean, it fit around the pipe, but it just wasn't long enough to um, get around. Uh, the um, the other side of it, it just wasn't the bolts weren't long enough. And then I got the exhaust put on. Um, the thing I'm noticing is there's a lot of like washers and stuff that are just put on hastily because you're gonna take them off and like two of one kind of washer on the other side and then two of the other kind of washer on the other side. So I don't really know what's going on with that, but. So far, it's coming along. It's starting to look like a motorcycle. I've got a lot more work to go on this, though. A lot more work. Um, all right, well, I'll uh, get back at it and see what else I can do. Okay, I uh, ran into another snag. Um, 
this piece here I don't that I bought that was the uh, spring tensioner I don't think it's compatible with this type of engine I mean, the way that this I don't know if you can see it in the image but uh, coming back to about here when it bolts on and I think some of the other ones bolt on closer to the surface so um, this piece here this big piece it doesn't have a hole in it. Now I have seen some of those that do have a hole in it, which makes me think I just bought the wrong part. So I'm going to have to go with the stock chain tensioner for now, which is uh, really unfortunate, but um, I guess uh, you know you got to do what you got to do, so I'm going to stick with stock chain tensioner. Actually, like I may have mentioned this before, this is one of the, uh, it's basically like a Cranbrook. It's like the exact same frame and so this kind of acts as a chain tensioner in itself so I may be able to get by without actually having any chain tensioner which would be even better. We'll find out um, depending on the exact specifics of how I position the engine um, but I'm gonna worry about that tomorrow. I think I got enough done tonight. I got the throttle, the clutch, the um, gas tank, I got the electrical assembly, got the exhaust, got the engine, got the carburetor, got the stupid carburetor thing in the carburetor, and I think that's going to be gonna be it for tonight, and then I'm going to follow up uh, tomorrow when I'm at my dad's house. Alright, I got the bike at my dad's house, um, we ran into a snag here, uh, the fuel... Uh, fuel line shutoff valve doesn't screw all the way in correctly so we're looking for a washer to space it out so that it lines up when it's all the way tightened in. Um, I'm not sure if we should just abandon the washer entirely or if we're going to get a drip from that so we'll, uh, we'll take a look and we'll update you once this is done. So this is remarkably center. Um, I think this is not as hard as some people make it. Uh, the trick is getting the first couple on and then uh, once you get the first couple on then you can then it'll be pretty much sturdy and then you can put the rest on kind of in any order. I mean we've kind of been going on a star pattern uh, but looks to be fairly centered so I think we're good. So as expected we've had a uh, setback here. The, we're gonna have to bend the coaster brake arm into more of a Z shape. Um, this was a known issue with some of these bikes. So uh, we're using the, uh, the Huffy Good Vibrations. Uh, it's very similar to a Cranbrook. Um, so uh, we're gonna try to bend this and see what we can do. So we have altered the coaster brake configuration just a smidge. Uh, we're putting it um, yeah, so we're gonna, uh, we're making a chop on it uh, to get the fender out of the way. The fender is clipping against the chain, so unfortunately we have to chop off a piece of the fender. I've seen this in other videos. Um, we're gonna take about that notch and then take it all the way down, all the way down um, until the bottom of the fender there. So we're gonna take all that off. Well, that went quicker than I expected.
As you can tell, we've got the bike working. Still running a little, a little weird, but uh, I think it might just be during engine break-in. So. All right, cool. <laughs> That's fun. All right, guys, this is going to be first uh, set up with the, um, uh, with the uh, camera on front so this is just the Amazon basics uh, holder so take a little ride and uh, we'll see what I see except for the bike Thanks for watching. Okay, so the bike is 100% working now. Um, so, retrospective. I'm just gonna kinda go over the brief pain points that I ran into and what I did to overcome them. So let's start from the top. Um, first of all, the hand grips. You just kinda have to grab them, turn them, pull them. Or, I mean, I guess if you have compressed air, you could use that instead. It's a lot of glare. It's very shiny. Um, so, the hand grips, that pulling them off for the first time was kind of hard. But it's not, I mean, it just takes a, like five minutes each. So, no big deal. Um, the clutch, getting the clutch right... Um, it actually has to be pulled in quite a bit. Um, I didn't realize that at first, but it actually has to be pulled in quite a bit before it engages. So here we have it like that. That's not even all the way out, so we actually had to tune it quite a bit to get it so it pulls. So that at that point, when you have it clipped, and clipped down with the button, that the clutch is disengaged. So. That was the big problem with that one. Um, let's see. Like I said, also with the throttle cable, I had a problem with it being just too short of a piece when I was um, to thread it in through the little um, circular piece. Um, let's see. What else do we have trouble with? Um, I still need to figure out what to do with this wire. This is just a little bit long, but it's not too unmanageable. Um, okay, the chain. The chain was probably the biggest pain point, actually. Um, and especially this guy here. Now, not in the way you'd expect. It never fell onto my spokes. I think we got this really, really tight. So, I'll come back periodically and make sure it's still tight. 
and maybe I'll hit it with some Loctite as well. Uh, but I think it's, I think it's really tight. I'm not worried about it falling into my spokes all that much. What I am worried about is this thing coming loose again. Uh, we put some blue Loctite on it, and hopefully it'll stay up. Um, it keeps it keeps slipping and vibrating down. Now the other thing on this that I'll have to show you on the other side. You can see it. Let's see. See, it has a flathead screwdriver head there, and that is really a bad choice. It should be like an Allen screw or something else than a flathead or a Phillips head. If it was a, a hex wrench head, that would also be acceptable. But this is just it's too easy to strip. I actually had to take the bolt out and take a hacksaw to it to make it deeper so that the so that the um, the flathead would stay in. So that part there um, was kind of difficult. Um, okay, so let me show you that. I bought some of the really good expensive fuel line to put on this thing. Um, like I said, because the previous fuel line was not um, not long enough to put the gas tank where I wanted it, aka up there. So bought a little bit extra and it was enough. So, and I have enough extra so I can make a second one because I'm going to make a second one eventually anyway. Um, so apart from that, um, getting the bike started wasn't all that hard. Um, let's see. I don't, um, we had to take, we had to take the um, back wheel off a few times. We had the main pain point here was the uh, coaster brake, which is, oh dear, what happened to the coaster brake? That's bad. I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, that's weird. I didn't do that before. Maybe that's, maybe that's what's giving me that. Weird sounds. Okay, well, maybe I'll have to go by and, uh, wow. Okay, that's a new one see it even that coaster brake it kind of got mangled so I'm gonna have to come up with something different for that because that's uh, probably rubbing against things um, so that's really bad <laughs> good thing I noticed that um, okay well there's that um, that's a new pain point that I just now noticed um, everything else I think is uh, I think is uh, pretty good. Um, I was not able to put the thing on this because uh, I needed this one here to, so that it would clear. So there's that. Um, uh, other than that, um, it was a pretty easy project. Um, oh, also we had to uh, clip. Away. This was another one of those pain points. We had to clip away that so it would fit. Um, and this is, this is just going to be a pain in the butt right there. I just got wedged in next to the thing. I'm surprised it was even like stopping. Wow. It's like, it's like grinding against the... Wow. Okay. Okay. That's weird. All right. I'll mess with that later. Um, so overall, I would do this again. I'm thinking about uh, starting up a business and flipping these. Um, I don't know how much I can get for them, but once I build a second one, I'm going to try to sell this one and see how much it goes for, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. So mission success, um, and I really like this engine, it has been running really, really well. It is, uh, this, this engine, it uh, doesn't spit out any smoke really, I've been mixing them at like 20 to 1 at least, so. I'm, I'm really surprised at how well it's running, given given that it's a brand new engine. And every time I see a brand new engine, somebody starting it up, it's spitting out smoke like crazy. So, um, at any rate, that's uh, that's it for this episode. Um, I'll uh, be sure to post a video next time I do another bike build. So y'all know what to do. Oh.
Okay, I got another box to unbox. This is going to be uh, hopefully what I think it is. This is from Bikeberry. Uh, let's see here. It's my invoice. My invoice. It's about like 50 bucks. And we've got our part here. Part one. This is going to be the uh, part that mounts to the hub. Looks about right. This is the standard large adapter for, um, uh, that is for the, um, coaster brakes, so. Then the second part is going to be the machined hub, and that just looks fancy right there, doesn't it? BBR, it's got BBR tuning on there, pretty cool, huh? 36 spoke. So, at any rate, I had mentioned previously this arm is causing me trouble. I'm concerned about, I, I hooked it to the wrong direction. It should be going the other way. It should be on this side. I was looking at pictures and stuff and I realized, oh crap, normally it's down here which means that it needs to hook off this uh, direction. So I'm either gonna need to move this down here or to down below here like it was before. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but I'm gonna have to unfortunately take this nice uh, chain tensioner off again, uh, even though now it's holding, and then put it back. And uh, I'm gonna need to take out a link of chain or some some amount of chain because this is significantly smaller I don't know if you can really see that on the video but it's significantly smaller so I might have to take out a link or two of chain all right so we got that fixed I uh, went to my dad's house um, we bent it in the right shape it took him about 10 seconds what I tried to do in 30 minutes and failed to do so that part's good. Um, we got the sprockets all installed, got the chain tight. Chain looks good, everything there looks good. The problem now is the rear uh, fender is not, it, it fell off. It, uh, a piece of it just chunked right off. And uh, so at any rate, uh, let me show you what happened here just like the main mount for it just just chipped and just fell right off so I'm gonna have to you know redo that in some way I have no idea maybe I can get another similar bracket because that bolts on there this bracket here so, oops. well I'll worry about that later for now I'm gonna try to ride